This is the power supply that comes with the uh, spindle motor kit, and it is not galvanically isolated. Uh, these brown wires here are the uh, AC power input. The two wires next to that are the uh, motor connections. And this meter is set to look at diode drop continuity. And here we have 0.589 volts. And nothing to the other terminal, but to the other AC terminal, 0.575 volts. So it's two different diodes. Almost surely in this bridge rectifier right here, there is no galvanic isolation. This is probably some sort of a uh, uh, line filter choke. And somebody's trying to hide something inside this big black box here. There's only one, probably a FET switch and one shocky diode and the usual little bit of other junk in here. And there is an opto-isolator sitting here right next to the control chip. But uh, I'll do another demonstration if anybody's interesting. But if, if you take a 47-ohm uh, resistor and hook it between this line terminal, which is the one that's diode uh, dropped to the guy over here, and connect it to the other side, which doesn't read anything with no power applied, and then turn the voltage up, you get all the wonderful smoke and a bang. Okay, here we have it plugged in. I have it uh, <clears throat> arranged so that this one I'm probing is the neutral. Looking at the uh, one of the motor terminals here, we see minus 51 volts. Looking at the other one, we see nothing. Okay, compared to the other line terminal, we see 49 volts and nothing. So we are so not galvanically isolated. Now, right now, I have the speed control pot turned to zero and a 47-ohm resistor hooked between what is currently line neutral and that left or most motor terminal. Let's just turn up the pot. My, my. So that's how not safe this is. It probably shouldn't be imported at all. Rex, I couldn't uh, resist showing you my own first uh, attempt at such a thing. All I did was split the case on this Dremel tool and make this piece of wood, which is a half inch thick, to clamp in the tool post. And it kind of worked. And there's a trick, which I will hopefully detail on the board, to getting, um, you know, being able to cut like big glass tubing with small wheels that would otherwise interfere with the Dremel tool. It basically amounts to putting the thing at an angle and then using your compound to feed it in at that angle. And you get, you know, a 15 degree chamfer or something on the on your cut, but that's usually not a problem, and you can grind it flat later.